This is Mrs. Alexander, and this is a 3.2.1 protein synthesis front load lesson. Today we're going to be talking about how DNA can turn into protein using your DNA strand, mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA. This process is known as protein synthesis. First, let's recap the difference between RNA and DNA. Look at the picture and note the physical appearances when it comes to differences. DNA is double-stranded, RNA is single-stranded. DNA contains the sugar deoxyribose, RNA contains the sugar ribose. That helps you with remember if it's D or R. D for deoxy, R for ribo. The four bases are also different. In DNA we have C, G, A, and T. Those pair A with T, C with G. In RNA you have three of the same base, but the base thymine is substituted for the base uracil. So you have C and G which pair up, and now A and U pair up cytosine, guanine, adenine, and uracil. You'll need to know those differences for the test and for the quiz. RNA is a message. It is a shorthand version of DNA. It is able to leave the nucleus, unlike DNA, which has to stay in the nucleus. I told my students to think about DNA as being the most prized possession in the library, the book that cannot leave the library. If you would like to write down directions or instructions from the book, you have to jot it down, kind of like RNA is only half the message. Whenever RNA is created using DNA, it acts as a template, and it uses base pairing rules, A, U, C, and G. Protein th synthesis is important because it involves how we express our genes, how our genes look, how our traits are exhibited. Do I have blonde hair, brown hair, red hair? Do I have dark skin, light skin, blue eyes, green eyes, brown eyes? The way that your proteins are arranged determines the way that your genes are expressed. Proteins make up all living material. Um, they're in our hair, our nails, our blood, brain, and nerve cells, um, in our cells, and our enzymes, antibodies, and they help with messengers as well. So understand that genes are, gene expression is very important because you're constantly making protein. They're so important, but yet there are only 20 different types, and those types come from all the different foods you consume. Um, things like beans, fish, chicken, pork, beef, turkey. Those kind of things are different types of protein. The official name for protein, or the building block of protein, is an amino acid. Sometimes they're referred to as peptides, the single proteins are as well. So a big long chain of amino acids is a big protein molecule. And those are held together by peptide bonds. The way that we combine our proteins will determine what type of trait is exhibited. The sequence of your proteins is what makes you specific and unique. You'll need to know the functions of proteins. Uh, proteins help us fight diseases like our white blood cells do. Um, they help us build, white uh, build new body tissue like muscles, skin, hair, and nails. Enzymes are a type of protein. They fit into that biomolecule category. And enzymes help with all the different processes in our body that need to go faster. For example, digestion. Um, enzymes speed up rates of reactions, therefore they let us get jobs done that without enzymes we wouldn't be able to sustain life and cell membranes have proteins embedded. So we learned that cell membranes were made of lipids or fats, but the proteins are like the channels or pores that allow certain substances to go through those fatty membranes. Particles that are too big or possibly need some sort of energy to be pulled through. Um, they're like pores or doorways. Where are proteins made? Proteins are made in the ribosome. The ribosome is a protein factory. A ribosome is made of two pieces. There's a large subunit and a small subunit. Think about them as like opening and closing, kind of like a conveyor belt or a machine would work. And the mRNA strand runs through it, or the message runs through the ribosome, um, and it tells the ribosome how to assemble your proteins. We're going to break down this process of protein synthesis into two steps. The first step is transcription. This is when you take DNA and you rewrite it into RNA. This occurs in the nucleus. Um, it's going from DNA to an RNA. Remember back to that picture how they're different. So you have to go from a double strand to a single strand, and you also have to complementary base pair it when you're rewriting it, and you use A, U, C, and G. No T's are allowed when transcription is complete. So no uh, thymine, uracil instead. Why is this important? Because DNA has your genetic code and your proteins need to be made. Uh, we talked about where it happens. It happens in the nucleus. Um, and then once the DNA is rewrote or transcribed into RNA, it can then leave the nucleus. So RNA is allowed to leave the nucleus. It travels through the cytoplasm and goes to find a protein. 
I'm sorry, it goes to find a ribosome where they make proteins. DNA is too large to leave the nucleus, um, kind of has to do with the double-strandedness, and remember that RNA is small enough, it's only a single strand, so it can get out the pore. How this process works is it takes the double strand of DNA and it temporarily unwinds or unzips. Um, it doesn't completely unzip because then you would lose the two strands of DNA. So there are little um, enzymes that will keep it from unzipping completely. And remember that one strand of DNA has a complementary strand on the left. So it doesn't really matter which strand you use as long as you complementary base pair it using mRNA nucleotides or bases. This single strand of RNA is called the message or messenger RNA. And so all RNA starts out as the messenger RNA. And this will go in and it will only copy a specific piece of your DNA. It doesn't have to copy the entire thing. For example, if you're needing to grow back new skin or hair cells, it just needs to fit, find the place on your DNA strand that explains how to make your skin or hair. And then it goes in and copies that one little piece. Whenever you're ready to make your protein, um, the DNA is transcribed into mRNA. Remember we talked about the bases. A pairs with normally T, but because we don't have any T's in RNA, A pairs up with U. Anytime you see a U, you're going to base pair it with an A. Um, so remember there are no T's in RNA. A and G are still our purines, but C and U are now our pyrimidines. The base pairing rules um, are the same there. And then when it comes to the hydrogen bonding, A and U form double bonds and C and G form the triple bonds. We're going to practice this. Um, remember as a little code, apples go under trees. What do you find under trees? Apples. So A with U, U with A. Think about cars and garages. Garages hold cars, C and G, G and C, back and forth. So if I give you these four three-letter sequences, those are called codons. Um, GTG is our first codon. Take the GTG and write down what the complementary base pair for RNA would be. Remember, you can't use any Ts. So if we start with the DNA code GTG, I want you to figure out what the RNA sequence would be for those three letters. Take out a piece of paper. Copy down the first DNA sequence. This first DNA sequence, I would like you to copy it down, and then below it, I would like you guys to write down the mRNA that would be correctly matched. I want you to do that a second time for the second DNA strand. Take a moment and pause the video here until you have enough time to write down what you think would pair. Remember, G and C, A and U. All right. Now that you have wrote down your answers, let's check and see if your work is right. Remember, there should be no T's if you did this correctly. Your first DNA sequence, GTG, should end up with an RNA sequence that looks like this. CAC, CCA, UGG, and then UGA. The second RNA sequence that you got should have followed. AUG, AAC, GAC, and UAA. This would be the time that if you did not understand how to do this or you had difficulties, raise your hand and ask your teacher. Moving on. After this code has been rewrote, so DNA took, the DNA was taken and rewrote into the mRNA, the message. That message leaves the nucleus. Okay, so DNA turned into mRNA. It left the nucleus using this little pore. And it doesn't do that until it reaches a stop sequence. The sequence actually will say stop, and that sequence will let the DNA or the mRNA strand know it doesn't need to know any more instructions. So it has what it needs, it knows how to make whatever kind of protein it's, it's looking for, and now it's going to leave. So it leaves through this little pore on the nuclear envelope, and then translation will occur. We'll talk about translation next, but understand that mRNA can leave the nucleus. Translation is the second part, which happens at the site of a ribosome. So it flows through the cytoplasm, finds a ribosome, and then we will use tRNA and rRNA, which is what we'll explain next. The second step is making a protein. This is called translation. Whenever you take the mRNA sequence and you actually reread it or translate it into a protein, um, there are 20 different proteins or amino acids. This is called translation. Translation uses mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA. It uses all the different RNAs. 
but you don't no longer need the DNA strand for translation to happen. So decoding of the mRNA to find the correct amino acid is called translation. Notice here in the picture, you've got the ribosome in the background, the top and the bottom, the two subunits. You've got your mRNA strand across the bottom. That's your written message, your code. And then you've got your tRNAs, which are floating around in um, the cell, and they have amino acids, which look like those little balls attached. Notice the red one is labeled it's lysine. That's just one of the 20 different ones. We talked about tryptophan in class. The tRNA has bases attached to them as well. Notice the far left has UAC. That UAC is going to match somewhere along the mRNA strand. The mRNA strand, we call those letters codons, the three letter sequences, but when the codons are attached to a tRNA, you need to complementary base pair them up, so we call those anticodons. They're still codons, but they're just, you're looking for the opposite or anti-complementary um, base pair to the mRNA sequence. Once they find the correct place, they bond right there, and then we can make peptide bonds between the different amino acids. These amino acids come from the foods we eat, we covered that, and um, they're all different types and they're rearranged depending on what our body needs to make right then. Every time three letters are, are read on the mRNA strand, we call those three letters a code or a codon, and the codons will code for different proteins. So codon is, consists of three adjacent bases, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and uracil. A triplet is another way of saying three, so the triplets, they complementary base pair with the tRNA. So when it's on the tRNA, again, that's called the anticodon. Here's a chart that shows the 64 different combinations you can create with the letters U, C, A, and G. However, out of those 64 combinations, there's only 20 different amino acids. This chart can be tricky to use, but we'll go over it in class. It's kind of like a multiplication table. You start at the top with the first base. If, it's, if the base is U, 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 the first U is here, the second U is here, and the third U is all the way over to the right. So you drag and drop like a multiplication table. The name of the amino acid is really long, and it's phenylalanine. A lot of times we'll abbreviate it as fen, P-H-E-N, or tyrosine, we'll abbreviate it as T-Y-R. So understand that when you start seeing three letters like S-E-R, those are not new bases. Those are just abbreviated words. Here's another version of that same mRNA codon chart. And so instead of dragging and dropping like a multiplication table, you start in the middle like a bullseye and you pick your first base. If the codon says AAA, start with the first A here, work your way over, whichever A touches that one is this next one, and then the third A that touches that A is right here. So it would be AAA would be lysine. So to sum that up, mRNA carries the instructions, tRNA carries the amino acid, and the ribosome assembles the protein. So those are the three different functions of RNA. They all do the same thing. The job is to create a protein, but they have different jobs depending on where they're at. Whenever amino acids are joined together, we call that protein a polypeptide. Poly meaning many, peptide meaning protein. So a polypeptide chain is simply a chain of proteins. All right, I'd like you to practice using that codon chart. I will have you guys either go back in the presentation to one of those two charts, whichever one you like, or you can use the handout that's provided in class. Start with the mRNA that you previously wrote down in your paper. So find that scratch paper that you took DNA and you turned it into mRNA, and this should match. Now I want you to use the codon chart, and I want you to find CAC. If you did this right, CAC should be histidine. So make sure you're doing it correct. Press pause now in the video. Take as much time as you need to decode the first mRNA strand and the second mRNA strand. So this is the first one, and then this is the second one. Okay, now that you've done that, um, here are the answers to the first mRNA strand. If you did it correct, you should have got histidine, proline, tryptophan, and stop. Stop is the stop codon that says we are done making a protein. Okay, for the second mRNA strand, if you did this one correctly, you should have got methanine, aspergine, aspartic acid, and stop. Ask if you had any questions or if you weren't able to figure out how to use that. We'll do this more in class. Um, to sum it up, DNA uses the process of transcription to make RNA. RNA uses the process of translation to create a protein. And here is a visual aid for you to show kind of the steps in order and how it occurs. The first step is DNA, the second step is you make R mRNA, the third step is you leave the nucleus, you go to the site of a ribosome. mRNA is loaded into a ribosome, the tRNAs find the codons, and then the tRNAs allow the rRNA to assemble the protein or the polypeptide chain.